I'm Jeff Mack from Newmark Grub Knight Frank, and I'm pleased to welcome Brendan McCorkle, the CEO of a company called CloudMine, to City Biz List. Welcome, Brendan. So the marketing is a, is a one of the three heads of a three-headed monster that we call the revenue engine at CloudMine. Um, I don't know if this is a contentious view of how sales and marketing works together, uh, but we believe that that whole side of the house is a team and a lot of companies really silo those three. Um, so marketing is responsible for bringing leads into the machine, sales is responsible for closing those leads and generating cold leads. Uh, these two should always be best friends because if marketing is doing their job, they're bringing warm leads to the sales team. If sales is doing their job, they have case studies and clients to talk about, which makes marketing's job easier. The third head we call client success. This is customer implementation, our sales engineering, the folks that actually take, run the technical demo with the client, onboard them, pass information on to the product team about what gaps there are in the product, and also run support, which is a very important piece of getting customers as they evaluate our technology and keeping them once they're customers. Uh, and I'm not sure who said this, but someone, and I really like this, said, said that Businesses are actually in the business of keeping customers, not getting customers. And that's how we think about customer success and why we call implementation client success. Because if our clients win, we win. Um, and if they're winning because of us, they're not going to leave. And that makes sales job easier because they're not have, gonna have to replace churn in the machine. So all three of those heads of that, that monster, although it's a friendly monster, uh, are very important to the success of CloudMine. Um, and Alex obviously is the newest and, uh, and brightest addition to the team. So we're feeling pretty good about that. Being the CEO at a startup, depending on how big you are, means a lot of different things. So when it was Mark Ely and I, it meant I wasn't an engineer. That's the only thing that that meant. Um, as we grew a little bit larger than that, it meant I was the one who was willing, or had to, depending on who you ask, uh, talk to investors, talk to customers, run the pitch. Before we had a technical demo, it was, it was the selling, if you will. Um, our first business cards, my role was actually listed as suit. So I was the suit, that's what that meant. I, you know, if we were giving a presentation, I would show up in, uh, you know, ha I would have buttons on my shirt, probably a collar, and I might not wear sneakers, right? So that was, uh, for, for Mark and Ilya, that was the difference between the three of us, is I would dress up and, and they wouldn't and, and be left with the technology. Uh, Mark has, has definitely become a suit a little bit in his own right now, although he doesn't like to admit it. Um, now that's much more complicated. We have venture backing, we've, we've raised a number of rounds of financing, there's, a, there's board management, there's investor management. The team has also hit 30, and that's a very interesting transition for being a CEO, uh, because somewhere, depending on which way you look at it, we've heard it for a couple different times, Bob Mao locally and David Bookspan, local entrepreneurs, have told me, I don't remember which one of them said which of these two, but one of them said at 25, and the other one said at 30, that at, I think it was at 25, a startup stops being a family. And at 30, a CEO is allowed to just be a CEO, which is sort of an interesting data point, because before then, you have to do basically everything that isn't getting done better than you're doing it, right? Which is actually, I think, an interesting thing, because founder, to me, is a more important role than CEO. CEO is what I have to do right now, but founder is the responsibility to do all the things that the company needs. And before 30 people, that isn't be just a CEO. It's be a lot of other things. Now that we have strong managers, and I have lieutenants, if you will, that are now enough people that my job has switched from managing other people in the organization to blocking and tackling for the management team and letting them block and tackle for their team. So that's been, and that's only in just the last couple of months where we have enough critical mass of employees and capital and, and smart people around the table where my job is to manage just the management team down and the investors up. And when we raise more money, I'll be raising more money and that's it, uh, which is kind of refreshing because that actually means that we're starting to do what I think is sort of the, the moral imperative of the founder, which is to replace yourself in everything that you could possibly do in the company. Um, Non-founders, I think typically most, or even most people in the world go about their daily job thinking, I need to make myself irreplaceable, but I think founders at startups, it's actually upside down. It's my job to come into work and start to do something and realize as I'm going through all of the things that I could do at CloudMine, someone's already doing it and they're doing it better than I could ever do. At that point, there's sort of that one moment in time, if that's true across the board, the founder has won because they've created something that's bigger than them, that's better than them, and then comes the hard part, then you have to get out of the way. So we haven't gotten there yet, uh, but most of the people at CloudMine are smarter than me and better at me at most of the things that they do, so we're on their way, which is exciting and terrifying, but exciting.